Hey folks, Aaron from Rogues Gallery here. And you know, we harp on uh, good prep work all the time, right? We're always talking about the importance of good prep when it comes to uh, finishing and painting your replica prop, whether it be a 3D printed Iron Man helmet or, you know, uh, a sword or a weapon or full body armor, whatever it is. Um, your prep work is so important and it's really, really tempting when you get to this stage to get this in, in the paint. It is so tempting. And so what I wanted to talk about today is a, a few little tips and tricks that we have uh, learned and that what we utilize when we're doing our prep. Um, there's no one way to do this, right? I'm not saying that this is the only way, but this is what has worked for us. So I'm gonna talk about some of the tools that we use um, in when doing prep work and uh, go through really quickly um, how we use them and how that's going to be beneficial. So first up, uh, we've got this uh, faceplate for the Mark 49. This is uh, 3D printed in PETG. Uh, this is a file from VEC3D and uh, you can find him on Instagram. Uh, he's got some great models out there. So, so check out VEC3D. This faceplate was printed at 0.16 millimeter, so pretty fine detail on a 0.6 mil nozzle. And this is in PETG, so this is a lot easier to, uh, to remove material than PLA or PLA plus. Um, so I'm, I'm starting with this because we've already done a pass with the orbital sander. And you might look at this and say, oh man, she's ready. Let's, let's get some primer on this. Let's get her into the booth. This is ready to go. And I gotta tell you, this is not good enough. And if your prop looks like this and you're itching to put some paint on it, stop. You're, it, it's not gonna turn out good enough. A, a, lot of, a lot of folks ask us, you know, what, what paint we use or, you know, what did we use to spray uh, or, you know, what, uh, what, are, you know, what 3D printer do you have because it comes out so clean? It doesn't matter. This, this is the real work, the prep work here. And the best part about this prep work is that it's cheap. It takes time, but it's cheap. Sandpaper is cheap. All right. So here's the deal. We've got this, um, like I said, machine sanded down with the random orbital with uh, what I believe was a 120 grit um, uh, sanding disc. So we've got that to start. And so what are we missing? Well, uh, these areas around the eyes simply could not get into um, with the random orbital and these lines in here. And then if you look at it, another uh, mistake that we see a lot from folks who are just, just getting into um, you know, prop making and, and 3D printed props specifically, is you'll sand it down like this and you'll go to paint it. Well, the problem is all of these lines, uh, whether they were well supported or not, doesn't really matter. All these little lines are gonna have jagged edges in here. And you might think, oh, well, you know, from a few feet out, nobody will notice. Um, we're gonna notice, I notice. Um, it's gonna, you might not even know why, but it will just make the difference uh, as a whole. Uh, you know, your your prop won't look as good because uh, it's really, it's really, it's not done yet. It's not finished yet. So let's talk about some tools that will be helpful in making this better. So the first one here that I really like, uh, this is a set from, uh, I almost fell off my chair there. This is a set from Harbor Freight of, uh, I think about, a, you get about like four or five of these uh, little pick tools. I love these little pick tools because um, sometimes if you get a, into some of these lines, uh, if they weren't supported very well, you might have some uh, some like little bits of stringing or something like that. Or if they were supported, uh, you might have some support stuck in there. So a nice thing to do is to just take one of these tools. This is kind of the hook one. There's also a straight one and a 90 degree one. And just run through these, uh, these areas here and just kick out any either support or any of those um, lines. Now this will dig into your print, so you need to be careful. Um, but uh, but that's a nice uh, little tool to have on here. 
Another great tool to hand, this is called a deburr tool or deburring tool. And this is great because if you look at this, um, it's actually got a fairly sharp edge there. I'm trying to get the camera to capture it. This is a fairly sharp edge there and you hold it in your hand like this and this rotates around. So what it's gonna do is you can take an edge, like the inside edge here, and you can drag it across there and it's going to deburr or you know, essentially take off the burrs uh, that are left from, you know, any areas there where this was either supported and the supports are still kind of clinging on there, maybe some remnants uh, or some, what we would call flashing in the manufacturing world, um, still stuck on there. If this was something that was molded, right, you would take the flashing off or something like this. And generally just works to kind of clean, clean up some of these areas. So. This is a hugely helpful tool. These are really relatively inexpensive, only a few dollars, again, Harbor Freight. And uh, you can see how it smooths out an edge like that, especially if there was support there. Um, so we can run through on the inside of the eyes and just, I've already done it on this part for the most part. Um, so we're just kind of going through the motions here just to show you how it works. Um, but that's the deburr tool. That's another awesome tool. So we've got these lines here that still need to be dealt with. What are we gonna do about these? That's where the, uh, the the small hobby files come in. You can get these at Harbor Freight or eBay or Amazon, your favorite online e-tailer, or the local hobby shop. Um, so a few that that I really, really like. This one is is kind of the, what I call like the half moon. So it's flat on one side and it's got a curved half moon on the other side. This is really great for getting in uh, an area with an inside radius because you can really um, you can really make progress there on rounding out some some print lines in a, in a round. This flat one is really, really nice because you can use it almost, you can get it parallel to your part and almost use it as kind of like a scraper for small areas. It's really, really nice. Um, and then this is my other favorite. This is the rat tail file. Uh, and this is great for each of these lines. So if you look up really closely, here's a line. And you might look at that and you say, that's good enough. Well, I'm telling you, it isn't. Um, if, you wanna, if you wanna up your game, so I'm gonna take this rat tail file and take a look. So I'm running it through here. And you need to be, you know, nice, even pressure, but you're, you're really, you're not pressing so hard that, uh, that it's gouging the part. You're really letting the tool do the work. And I'm just running this through and you want to keep it fairly low. So if it's in like this, you're going to be poking the part, right? So you want to, like I said, let the, let the tool do the work. And then I was only a few passes and look at that. So we've really, really taken down those, uh, the kind of the jaggies that come from, uh, from the, the additive manufacturing process there. So, I mean, look at that side. That did not take very much effort, guys. This is, this is not rocket surgery, right? Um, so what we can do is we can go through, like this one is another one you can see. Um, from far away, yeah, you might say, oh, that's good enough, but you know, you know us, right? It's not good enough. So, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna just nice and easy get in there and smooth it out. This is all about material removal. So that's what our sanding is about. That's what um, that's what all of this is about. It's all about material removal, right? So then um, you've got a few other interesting areas like uh, like in here, the inside of the, uh, of the eyes, we had some support, right? Between here and here. So these two areas were supported. And then now look at what we got. We've got those, got those jaggies in there. So this is where um, I would probably use, you know, either this, this half moon file or the, or the flat one and go through with the hobby file and just kind of get, I don't know if you can really see that, but um, get it nice and smooth because you know what? Your paint is, is gonna cover that, but it's also going to, the paint is gonna flow into those areas. So uh, there, there's a good view of it. You can see right there, you can see, you can see the lines. So, so here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna run this through and this is going to smooth down those areas. So I haven't even touched a piece of sandpaper yet, right? 
uh, this is all with just these small tools. Haven't even touched any sandpaper yet. And we're knocking down some of these tough areas with just a few small, cheap tools, all right? So this area right in there was pretty bad um, because of the, like I said, because of the support. And so we're knocking this back now. All right, that looks pretty good. So um, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing all these areas uh, right now uh, for for the demonstration purposes, um, but I'll but I'll just do another few key areas. This is another one. You've got this this internal radius here. That's perfect for this half moon one here because you can just you just get in there, smooth it out, and you can smooth out that that radius. That is. Um, super helpful for these areas that had support connecting to it. Part of the helmet here. You can see this vent in here. This is something that uh, uh, me in a past life, I would have said, ah, just paint over it. Just don't worry about it. Well, you know what? It's not good enough, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this flat file and you're gonna use it almost like a scraper. So I'm getting it so close to, per uh, to parallel to the uh, to the surface and you can see what's happening. It's it's kind of like sanding it, right? It's just, but you're, what you're really doing is you're scraping that top layer off. And I don't know how good you can see that, but uh, we're getting it, we're getting it compared to this side, which I've done nothing to. So that's another pretty cool trick to use with these, uh, with these hobby files. And look at that, it this took like, 45 seconds, right? Just, just, just well under a minute to, to knock this out and make it, uh, make it smooth. So, so that's pretty good. Um, now let's talk about some sandpaper. We use, uh, we use this, uh, purple back or this, this purple stuff. This is the 3M professional grade. It is more expensive, but it lasts so much longer. It's totally worth it. Um, because you just don't have to throw out your sandpaper nearly as often. So, um, we have uh, 120, 220, 320, and 400 uh, on hand at all times. And, uh, and so that's really nice for getting in. Like you can see this area in here, this right under the eyebrow here. Um, and I'll probably, I'll probably start with 120 here. And uh, you know, just getting in with a corner of this and don't run from the hand sanding, okay? The hand sanding, is really where the work is done. It is absolutely the game changer. It's where it's it it's really makes the difference. The hand sanding. So this this hole underneath this eyebrow here, piece here. So another piece right here. You can see. I don't know if you can get the glint of that, but there's all layer lines in there. That's all got to be done by hand. And there's not that much. There's not that much to do. It's, I promise you, it's, you know, it's not as much as you think it is. So it really is worth it to take that extra step and do the work. Um, another one that I wanted to talk about is the sanding twigs. So these are awesome. You can get them in a, like a, like a 30 pack for relatively inexpensive for just a couple dollars on Amazon. Uh, and they come in a various uh, a variety pack, right? Of different, different sizes and grits. So for something like this, it, you know, you could wad up a piece of sandpaper and try to get in there, but using the tip of this is really easy. So we have these on hand in every size, because like I said, it's a variety pack. Um, and you can just knock out some layer lines real easy here. And what I do sometimes is, cause I, I wear the tips out of these the fastest. So I'll cut it in half and then that gives me, and then, and then I'll cut off cut it in half again or something like that and use use each piece or you could just cut off you know six inches of it and then keep going um because these are super useful and again uh relatively inexpensive here what we're, what we're doing so you can get through all these little contours it's really nice this guy is probably quite honestly too uh this is too fine of a grit to work on a bear print this is probably 220 they don't tell you what the colors are so this is probably about a 220 grit which i, I would say that I'd like a like a little little heavier grit just for sanding the bare print we sand the bare print like all the way down like all of the layer lines are gonna be gone 
by the time we get this into primer. And the reason for that is, well, number one, it's easier to sand the bare print because the, the dust from the bare print does not load up the sandpaper uh, nearly as bad as primer does. So it's really, really nice to, you know, kind of not have to deal with that until, until you have to. So, uh, so sanded this bare print down with, uh, uh, you know, with 120 and then we'll do it again with 220. And then, uh, you know, once, once all these areas by hand are done, we'll be ready for primer. And, you know, a lot of people talk about being stuck in, you know, primer purgatory, right? Sand, prime, sand, prime, sand, prime, over and over and over and six times, seven times, eight times. No, we're not doing that. We're doing one coat of primer, guys. One coat of primer. Once this is, once this bare print is sanded, we're doing one coat of primer. We're gonna sand that one coat of primer smooth and then we're painting, that's it. It's, it's not that crazy. Um, and it really is about taking the time to sand the bare print and getting it nice and smooth. Uh, and we do that before we even touch the, the primer. And you know, a lot of times we'll use a nice primer, uh, a nice filler primer, sometimes we won't. Sometimes we just straight up regular automotive primer because when it gets, it gets to the stage where you're not trying to, to essentially avoid the work or you're not trying to skip a step by, by using primer to cover those areas where you didn't feel like sanding. And instead you're using it, what it's meant to be used for, which is for leveling off and giving you a nice smooth base to paint from. And if you do that, boy, your finished result is gonna be so much better, so good. So in review, we had the uh, we had the pick tools, we had the the deburr tools, hobby files, sandpaper, the sanding twigs. So, um, just clean my sanding twig a little bit there. So there you go. Um, that's pretty much it. This is what we do. This is our process. So we sand the bare print down and really get it good. You know, get all of these areas that. Uh, that need some attention, you know. If you can, if you can see print lines now, you're gonna see them through the paint. Don't think the paint is gonna, you know, magically solve all your problems. Anyways, uh, that's it. And uh, again, if you want this model, get, check out Vec3D on Instagram uh, or any of his other models. Really, really great stuff. Uh, these uh, built-in magnets are super nice. So. Um, it's a, it's a really cool model and I'll be finishing and painting this um, on our Instagram. So check back for daily updates. All right, thanks all.